So last class, we, we ended with kind of um, talking about um, making a logo and what that is and how it's composed. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna do that a little bit more. But before that, I wanna get into, um, again, we talked about the, the basic types of logos. So I have a little presentation on that. So let me dig that up really quick. One second. I think I put it on my desktop. Okay. So we're gonna go through this little brief presentation um, on logos, <clears throat> branding and logos. Just so you guys have a little bit better understanding of this as we start to um, develop yours, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we'll, we'll go back into demo mode with Illustrator for that. Um, so any questions before we start? We need to make sure we're recording. Yes, and we have that open. Okay, and I'm sharing my screen. Okay, so as I mentioned last class, um, there are three major types of logos. Um, one is a word mark or a letter mark, meaning it's basically letters. Um, the second is a pictorial mark, um, <clears throat> or sometimes called a brand mark, and it's really kind of the icon. Um, so if you think of like the Nike swoosh with no words at all, or the Apple logo with just that Apple icon, that's kind of a, a icon or a pictorial mark. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there's a combination where you have um, an icon, a pictorial mark, along with a word mark. So you're going to find that the vast majority of logos are really this first one, the word mark, or a combination mark. Um, <clears throat> many companies aren't able to succeed with this icon because it takes literally millions and millions of, of uh, impressions to kind of look at it. So Aaron popping up something here. In far, that's your logo. Okay, we'll talk about that. Let me just put that aside for now. <clears throat> we'll go through that as we're going through marks. Um, again, to get to that, that sense of, or to get to that icon status takes a lot. Um, and even for bigger companies that, um, could potentially be obviously at that icon status. They don't necessarily always get rid of the words. Um, <clears throat> so let's get into that. So this is an example of a word mark. Um, it's IBM. It actually stands for International Business Machine. International Business Machines, and um, it's been around for a long time. So it is letters, okay? But it's it is. You see the lines going through it. Um, they make machines. They started with typewriters and early computers and those kind of, of, of products. And um, the logo is, again, not does not necessarily mean when you look at that, you wouldn't go, oh, computer company, um, machine company, business machines. It, it just kind of got this look to it that's their own. And it's become synonymous for what they stand for. But don't, again, don't get kind of caught in that sense that the logo has to be representational of everything you do as a company. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with having um, some kind of imagery, some kind of feel, but um, it, don't think that the logo has to be everything. Does that make sense? It's, it, it is a symbol, it is a brand for the company or organization, uh, but it's not meant to um, <clears throat> have you be able to look at it and understand everything that the company does. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, um, word marks. Um, other examples here are Google, um, Coca-Cola, and HBO. Um, again, you know, Google has changed over the years, but it's, it's done modified changes. It hasn't really, um, 
gotten rid of what they started with, right? They've done some some slight font change, but um, again, I, obviously Google, one of the biggest companies in the world at this point, um, they could do anything they want. And if they just had a G, you would know what it was if that's what they decided they were gonna use as their logo. But um, they decided to keep it spelled out. Um, Coca-Cola likewise, you know, all the world over knows that brand. And, um, you know, they've done some slight modifications over time, but for the most part, it stayed the same for the last hundred years or so. Um, and then HBO home box office. Um, <clears throat> again, they've, they've gone to this abbreviation, which they've had all along. Um, but again, it, it's, um, they've done stuff to it, right? I mean, if you look at the way the B and the O kind of touching, and then this secondary circle within the L, um, kind of like a projector or something along those lines. Okay, so when we say it's a word mark, it's not just typing out the word with the fir first typeface that comes up. Okay, um, thought and, and process has to go into what you're doing. Even something as simple as three letters like HBO. Um, other word marks that you guys are familiar with, NASA. Um, and again, even NASA is cool, right? I mean, look at these beautiful arcs, these beautiful curves they have in there. Um, this, these implied A's, right? I mean, it doesn't, it says A, it says NASA, but they didn't have to do the crossbar on there, okay? And they've just got these beautiful curves going on. Uh, Visa, and then something like Kellogg's, okay? Um, so again, all of these companies are big enough that they could go to some kind of icon if they chose to but they, they've kept with a word mark. Um, and again, because it's, it's very visual, people can see it and they read it and know exactly what the company is. Would know, know the name of the company, I should say. Um, pictorial marks or something, again, here's something like Apple. Other ones you know, um, Pepsi, the new Pepsi logo. New meaning it's probably been 10 years now or so. Um, Twitter, okay, and then something like Target. Okay, um, <clears throat> again, it, it takes a lot to get a company to that point of just having something like a little blue bird and you know, you, everybody knowing that, knowing that that is Twitter. Again, they got to that by doing millions and millions and millions of impressions um, from you being able to see it every day on your phone, um, from it showing up in you know every kind of icon that a little TV somebody shows something on TV so and so tweet it and they have that little icon in the corner. Um, a combination mark is something here like Adidas where we've got the name and we've got the icon. Now don't get me wrong, something like this can they can split it right. Adidas is well known enough that if they take the the flower surfboards, whatever this, this icons are up here um, and separate that from the word Adidas, most people would know what it is, okay? But in general, they use the two together in combination um, to make this combination mark. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, simple when we have Lacoste, they're, they're well known for their, their alligator. <clears throat> and if you look at the a, have a Lacoste shirt, they have the alligator on the front. Okay, they don't have the word. Okay, so again, that icon can be used separately from the words as needed. Uh, Burger King, they've gone through several um, revisions or word or several versions of their logo over, over the years. Um, and here it is kind of the, the, these two little marks are kind of like a, the bun with the Burger King in the middle. And then this kind of C swooping is just kind of tying it all together, okay? Um, and then BP, which stands for British Petroleum, it's a oil company. They they they're trying to be a little bit more environmental, uh, environmentally friendly, and they've gone to this kind of uh, green flowery kind of feel uh, with their logo and this kind of BP up here offset, right? So instead of centering it, they kind of offset the BP from the flower. Um, Kind of like, you know, uh, something like, like six squared, right? The little squared mark, a kind of a corner. Um, other marks, 
have become synonymous with KFC. We've got the, the, the Colonel, um, you know, Doritos. Again, we've got this triangle that they've created with the, uh, the word Doritos, um, Harley Davidson. Um, it's kind of a shield kind of thing. You'll oftentimes see this used um, elsewhere. Okay, without the Harley Davidson, they'll put some other things in it. Um, a game of food, yeah. Okay, so, um, and, and they, they, most logos, I'm gonna say too, a lot of logos go through changes. I mean, if you look back at Doritos, for example, how it looked in the 90s or the 70s, um, it was different. I think Doritos came out in the 70s, I wanna say somewhere around there. Um, likewise, you know, KFC has changed changed over the years. So, um, you know, a lot of times the logos will change um, over time, but the, whenever you're designing a logo, you want it to last a while, right? I mean, as we spoke about, it's too much to change a logo um, every week, every month, every year, okay? There's a lot of cost involved in that. So, um, you know, a company would not want to do that. So you, when you're designing, you're trying to create something uh, that lasts for time, a time, a period of time. Um, and it could be, you know, 10 years or it could be a hundred years. You don't know. Um, but, you know, many times these logos become timeless entities. Um, Harvard, again, more of a shield kind of thing, but it is a logo and you can kind of see the early ideas of, uh, of, of uh, logos and where they kind of came from. Uh, my, my logo for my, my company, the National Park Geek, um, again, it's become iconic. Um, it's not something I'm ever looking to change at this point. Um, will it change? Who knows, right? I can't tell you that. But, you know, at this point, I'm developing the brand. It's been five years, roughly. Um, it still works. It's still fresh. You know, and I'm happy about that. Um, yes, and Amazon, A to Z, right? So you can kind of see that, some, that symbolic thing going in there from the A to the Z with the smile. Um, again, I, I, they're, they've even done things where if you see the smile on the box now, I think, I, yeah, I got a box yesterday from Amazon, it just has this, this smile, that the arrow. Um, and, and if you see it, it's, it's a smile, but it's also an arrow, right? So it's kind of, again, moving, right? Direction, what they do, they deliver, they, you know, you come and you get from A to Z. There's, you know, several meanings here with their logo. Um, and again, it's a nice, thing that looks basically it's a it's a Helvetica or something like Helvetica with some mod modifications um, and even on the Z they've got this arc that kind of mimics the the arrow um, again it keeps it friendly it keeps it keeps it working um, so as we're going it, logos are an important thing right they become these um, iconic visions of the company itself Starbucks um, a little history of their logo. Um, you can see the origins. You can see where it came from. Um, it's not like it's totally like, oh, where did that come from? You can see the um, uh, the evolution uh, of, of the mermaid, the siren throughout their logo. Um, it started with, you know, this more brown and much more uh, detailed. And then they went to a little bit um, we'll say more, a little bit more minimal. And this was about 87. And then they went to even more of a, more of a minimal image here in 92. And now in 2011 or so, um, oh, that's like 10 years now. That's crazy. Um, they, they just kind of went to this picture of the mermaid. Um, so you can see the origins and you can kind of see, I think the evolution of how to evolve. And, and at first people were like, well, but people know what this is with just the, the icon um, and they do. Okay. But again, it took, you know, a lot of cups of coffee for people to start to realize that that mark, uh, that mermaid is the Starbucks logo. Um, a lot of it is the color. Right, so I mean, they're being, they've used the same color since 87 in there. They've used basically the same icon, but they've done some modifications to it, but it's still all there. Um, and again, it kind of comes to brand consistency, right? You want to kind of be true to the brand, be true to uh, what's out there. And definitely as a designer, um, when you get 
handed these kind of projects to do logos or rebranding, making making a new logo for a company. Uh, you want to take some time and want to study it and find out what works and see how, um, you know, find out what people think about it and how to react to it. It kind of guides you in where you want to go. Okay. Uh, so we're surrounded by literally hundreds of brands. Um, you know, and these are all brands that you guys know, you know, from, you know, Campbell's to Betty Crocker to Oreo. Um, again, certain industries have certain colors. Uh, you'll find uh, reds and yellows a lot in the food area. Um, you'll find things like, you know, blues um, in healthcare. You'll find greens um, in, uh, greens and blues kind of technology companies. You also find them obviously in companies that are environmental, um, whether it be something like a, obviously a landscaping company to something like a, you know, a, an environmental cause, those type of thing. Again, they're gonna go with the greens and browns and so forth. So um, don't, don't try to reinvent the wheel, but know that um, there are certain perceptions that we all have of certain colors, but it doesn't mean you can't do it, right? I mean, we, here we have, you know, Danan, which is yogurts, and we have Oreos, which are cookies, um, and they're, they're working with the blues, okay? Um, so they didn't have to go with the reds, even though Dana has a touch of red in there. Um, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but it's okay to kind of experiment, right? So kind of look and explore a little bit don't think I'm already, oh, I'm doing food, so I better do reds and yellows, okay? It may end up being that, but don't be afraid to explore. Um, again, the, 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 the plethora of logos that we tend to see every day is, is really quite amazing. All right, so um, let's get back into designing again. Um, any questions on any of that? Any questions on kind of the logos? Again, three types, um, word mark, uh, a combination, and the, and the icon, okay? Um, and for, for this, for our, 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 our travel agency, um, I would like to, to, to I want you to either do a word mark or a combination, okay? Um, just an icon um, really won't work. And even, let me just see, even like Expedia, which is obviously travel. Let me just see what they've done. I think I have their app on the phone here. So even Expedia, which, let me zoom in here, let me get that. The brightness it doesn't like the brightness. Um, they had that that plane going through a circle um, as their their icon, and then they have the word Expedia. They'll they will I can tell you use it separately. Um, they, that icon it, it showed that when I was loading the app, so they will pull it off and use it separate. But they're going to be using it in combination with the the words itself and the uh, the the combination of the icon. Um, let me just pull up here. Okay, so you will see it separate with the, the jet that they're using, um, but for the most part, they're using it as a combination where they're using the, the mark with the words, okay? Um, and this is the older logo, this is here. So you can kind of see, move that over. Even here, you can see how they, they've, they've changed over time. Um, looks like they're still maybe using that, I'm not sure. Um, they, they've gone with a more flat look. These are more of a, 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 a three-dimensional, and this is a little bit more illustrative style. You can actually see the plane. Um, here it's become more of a symbol with the, the gradient globe 
and now they've gone to flat. Um, and, and a lot of a lot of companies have gone with a flat look of as of recent. Um, so again, you want to be aware of what's happening trend-wise, but it doesn't mean you can't buck the trend. Okay, um, a lot of it depends on the company and what they're doing, uh, but you know, going flat doesn't you don't necessarily have to do that you could go more dimensional um or you could go illustrative okay i mean everything works okay it's really just kind of the company as they're working along um i guess it's kind of like um they're they make it so that it's easier once you once you see it it's like oh you recognize it instantly instead of looking at all the details yeah yeah i mean that that's a part of why some things have simplified um you know, but it, there are there are logos that are fairly complicated still. But I think overall, um, you're going to find the logos that are um, that have longevity to them are a little bit simpler. Okay, um, so it doesn't mean you can't have detail, but in general, you want to be um, you know as as simplified as you can. And, and I brought this up because we're going to continue working. But um, you know, these are a kind of photographs here, but um, you know, there are illustrations that you will find um, that are that are quite detailed. OK, um, so if you're doing the travel agency, I mean, you know, a globe is is very appropriate. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but do you need the detail of, you know, the 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 the, the latitude and longitude lines? Do you need the details of the Atlantic Ocean? Do you need the details of mountains or, um, you know, the 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 lines that represent each country. Um, again, it may be needed, but again, you got to really think about it as a designer. What do I need to do that says Earth? Okay, um, you know, we have something like these, which are, you know, fairly representational of uh, of the Earth. But again, there's a lot of detail going on here with the islands and uh, you know those kind of things. Or do we need to do something, um, you know, much much simpler? to bring that out, okay? Um, let me just do that. This is pretty simple, right? But that has a latitude, longitude lines if they wanted to. Uh, let me just go to, I'm just gonna go to vector. That'll bring up some generalized things. Um, you know, so do I need to put the Caribbean islands in, in Cuba for, for you to recognize this as a, a, a globe? I'm gonna venture to say no, all right? Cause you can look at this one here and you will say that's a globe. Now, it's, again, it's very rough with its um, uh, illustration technique, but you still get it. Likewise here, right? I mean, you look at it and go, oh, that's Africa. Okay, I mean, you, you get it. We've seen these things so much that we know exactly what it is. So um, feel free to take artistic liberties uh, with your designs. You don't have to be... Um, completely accurate, right? I mean, it's a mark, it's a logo. Um, and in fact, if you were completely accurate, <clears throat> it's gonna actually probably take away and be a little bit too busy from a standpoint of a logo, okay? So, you know, wanna think about the simplification and how you wanna work that in order to make it work. <clears throat> Likewise, we do these things, you'll see this with the um, latitude, longitude lines kind of thing. Again, it becomes representational of a globe. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, again, when we see something like this, we still think of globe or travel um, without necessarily having the actual continents drawn in, right? So you don't necessarily have to draw, but again, you can, okay? Um, it, it's about kind of working things together and try to figure out what works. And, and likewise, you may not go with the, the first um, one. So here we have one of, of kind of showing more Asia, China, Africa, Australia, this North South America, and this is you know Africa again with more of a Europe kind of center. So um, you know you may show a globe or part of a globe that's more representational, maybe kind of the travel that um, your organization does. If your company was to work, say, solely with uh, US travel, it probably be more appropriate to kind of show some kind of map of the US than it would be to show a world globe, right? Because now they're seeing the globe, they think, oh, we do world travel, but 
the company may only do domestic travel. Okay, so if that's the case, you're gonna want to show, you know, something like a US map. So, so even here, right, you could do a map with all the outlines of the states, or you could just do, you know, a map, in this case, it's got a flag built in, but you could do a solid color map with, with and you still know that it's the United States. Does that make sense? So, you know, don't think I have to put it all in. I could do something like this, this green one, but it, even, even less, I don't need to even put the state lines in there, right? Because just seeing the shape of the US um, works, okay? And it could be very even abstract, so. So these are abstractions. This was made of hexagons. This was made with dots and lines. Um, this was done in a vector, kind of like making pyramid kind of thing in school, dots. We, we see these and we, we know exactly what this is. It's still the US, okay? So um, when you're designing, don't think you have to be literal. You can go and have some creative uh, latitude um, in creating that. That, that icon, that look, that feel. Um, <clears throat> and, and even, even with the, um, the, the style or line outlines, you can do that. I mean, these are all pretty, pretty realistic in the, the shape of the continent, um, but, or shape of the US, I should say, but I'm trying to find one that's pretty abstracted. I mean, this is, here's pretty abstracted. Um, Right. You still look at this and go, oh, that's the U.S. Even though it's made up of circles and lines that are all kind of interconnected and what that is, who knows. Um, but you still get that this is the U.S. simply by the shape. Um, it's become so iconic. I mean, here's another one of, of France. Again, it's iconic, right? When you start to know um, the shape of some of these, you know, bigger popular countries, it makes a lot of sense, right? So. Um, don't be afraid to be creative and, and work abstractly with what you want to do. All right, so I'm going to go back. Um, I'm going to get a US map. I just want to find one that I think will work. I'm going to get rid of the abstract because I want to just kind of show you how that works. So um, <clears throat> let's say that. Um, I've been thinking about it and I think the idea of doing a, a map of the US would be good for my travel agency, um, but I don't want to or need to put in all of the, the states. Um, so I'm looking for my, kind of more of an abstract uh, outline kind of version. So I'm just kind of looking with it and, and we'll say this is kind of nice, this works. I don't need that. I just need that. I just want this. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to drop it into my illustrator over here. Now I can't use this image as is because um, I didn't buy it. Okay. And again, depending on the copyright now for schoolwork, I tell you everything goes, don't worry about it. But from a professional standpoint, I would not use this as is, but I can use it as kind of a rough guide. And I can, a couple ways I can do this. One, I can make this as a layer and I can come back through with my pen tool and I can start to trace it. Right? And it won't be the same, but it's gonna give me some kind of ideas. Get the little Michigan here. So I can kind of come through and I'm just kind of, being rough, I don't want it to be perfectly in line with what it really is. Come down, get a little Maryland, a little Virginia, Carolina coast, great state of Florida. 
Louisiana, New Orleans, guys, you should go there. It's a cool place. Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, the Golden State, California, back up to Oregon, Washington, and boom. So we've got this as a separate <clears throat> one. So it's not the same. You can obviously see, see the reference here. I, and I did it just because I want to keep things scale and proportional, but I'm not trying to copy it. Um, you know, and you can see that took me a matter of not even a minute to do. And we were able to uh, duplicate that out. And again, we've, now we have something else that we can work from in our logo development. Okay. Um, <clears throat> things I could do is I could draw the flag in there, give us some gradients. Um, you know, I can, I can twist it, I can distort it even more. Um, you know, again, it's up to you as a, as a creative, as a designer to kind of do that. Um, you know, so I, I'm going to say, okay, the, now Draplin travel is more of a, a domestic travel. I'm going to open up my artboard, stretching it out with the artboard tool just to give us a little more room to work. I'm, I'm trying to work on white because it's just easiest for the eye to understand. Um, I like what I was kind of starting to do here the other day of using the same typeface with two different weights. And I'm bringing that over. Now you're going to go, where is it? It's below because I have that sub layer here on top. So I'm going to move this down a little bit. And I'm going to move this one. Let me go back. I'm going to just copy those two and I'm going to move those objects or range and I'm going to move to the front. Okay, front is in, in the top, back is behind. All right, so I'm going to move to the front. That way, when I pull them over, you can see that the words are above the path, which I created the US on. Okay, so now I have to kind of work those up in combination. Now, things you want to look at when you're starting to deal with your topography is things like this is the descender, the, the part of the P that drops down. Okay. Um, and then you have the, in this case, the L, which ascends up. Okay, so, you know, and how they work together and how they might kind of tie through, right? You might be able to have that A sitting on top of the T. Makes it a little bit hard to read, so that didn't work. So again, you just want to kind of um, be able to work and adjust and kind of play. Other things you want to play with um, is potentially taking something and making it all caps, right? So I'm making the word draplin all caps, whereas the, the word travel is upper and lower, okay? So again, we have a lot of latitude with what we can do um, on these, okay? Um, it's, not, it's not too bad, but again, I'm getting a little weird with how it's kind of sitting in this area of Michigan, the L. Um, so I could make this smaller. So it's kind of fitting in this area, this generalized area. Um, or I could make the map bigger. Um, again, and maybe I'm gonna play with a different typeface um, and know that we have these options of like all caps, uh, upper upper and lower caps. Again, this is a cap, but it's, it's, it's lower than the true height of it. If you unclick it, it goes back to the upper and lower case typography that we had initially. Um, you know, again, maybe this is, that's the light. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm going to do that something totally different. That's a nice type base, but it's a little tracked. Here's the tracking. You can see the letters are touching. I don't want that. It's too much. Um, Zero seems to be a bit much. I'm going to put it at minus five. And then what I'm going to do is come back in with using my touch type tool. I'm just moving this out of the way. The touch type tool, and I know I think we talked about it, but um, under type, the bottom one here is the touch type. What that does is allow me to play with each character and I can move it. And there's still um, legible characters. And you'll notice here also, I'm getting the glyphs or the alternatives that are working there. So I can also open up my glyphs 
and this is showing me the other alternatives for that typeface. Okay, so if you wonder what the glyph is, um, it's alternatives, but oftentimes too, they also will have kind of icons um, somewhere with them. Some of them have like little, uh, I don't know, we'll say a happy face and that type of thing. So actually I'm gonna start with that T because I see there's some cool glyphs in here for T. And where were we here? I'm just looking at these are kind of nice. That's a nice T. So I'm just double clicking on it and it's changing it. Um, and then I'm going to click to the R and it shows me that's the R, but I'm going to see there is an alternative R, which is down here. You can kind of see that comes out. Um, and now I'm going to go to the A and the A has a couple alternatives. You can see the versions here. But also with the touch type tool is I can move things around. Like, so I wanna move the A maybe a little closer to the R. I'm just using my arrows to subtly move that in. I'm actually gonna go back to the R and move that a little bit closer to the T. I don't want them to touch, but I want a, a little bit tighter connection. Um, the A has this couple alternatives down below. That's probably too much. That may be, hmm, that one's different. I don't know. Let's go nuts. Let's go with that that A, and then I'm going to again move this B in. So I'm getting a little bit close. I'm looking at that space between the A and the B. Okay. Now this one has an alternative. It comes out. I think that's going to be too much, right? That's going to just kind of be a little bit too busy. Um, so I can pull it back to where I have a, a V with a little extra swoosh on it or not, I'm gonna keep it without in that case. I'm gonna move my E over a little bit and the E alternatives are that, or that extra long swish, okay, um, or the original. I'm gonna go with the one with a little bit extra curl in there and I'm gonna pull that a little bit tighter and I'm gonna look at the L, that's too much. That's a little bit too much too. So maybe I'm gonna keep that L the way it was. Um, I'm just gonna verify all my my glyphs here. Do I have any other L's that I want? Um, H -J -K. The L is there, I don't like that L. Okay, so we're gonna call that good. Um, and then I'm gonna click with my tool. So I have my word travel that I can play with here. Um, and, and the map is now starting to become an icon, starting to become something in the background. Now with this word travel, it's very heavy, okay, and very decorative. And it doesn't mean I can't go with a lighter typeface here, but I think this needs to have a little bit more weight to hold up against it. Um, and again, I'm looking for something, uh, I mean, I like this spot, but when I look at it here, even if I make it a little bigger, I'm holding the shift as I enlarge to keep things proportional. Um, it's getting a little bit busy and it's kind of not, I don't think it's complementing the word travel as much. Um, and then I have problems with the, the descending, the P coming into this, this curly Q on the R. All right, so I could move that over something like that. That's not too bad. Now I'm going to zoom out, right? Because sometimes we look at these things so close that you just can't really see them. Um, and you need to have your eye take a little break. So I'm, I'm pulling it out and making it smaller so I can kind of look at it and let my eye see it with a little bit of a breathing room, a little white space around it, um, just to kind of see how I, how I like, like it and see if it feels the way I want. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna say I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna make a copy because I'm like, I'm not quite there, but I know I've got some things here that I like. I'm liking the travel. I'm liking the, the, the map, the geography here, the lower 48, but I'm not quite sure about this, this draplin word, this font. So maybe I wanna spend some time going through some different fonts, seeing what kind of comes up. I could use the same font as I use for travel, 
Um, nothing wrong with that. I mean, again, it's very, very common to do that, right? You're going to have one typeface and do it. I'm just trying to go a little bit crazier since I have you guys here um, and see what I can come up with that kind of works and complements it. Okay, so it, it needs to work together um, in order to pull it off. And I don't know if it will. I might need to go back to the same typeface. Just trying to get a quick feel. Questions as we're going along here, guys, as I'm kind of looking for typefaces. This is making sense. Yes. Who's sleeping? You know, I can't yell if she's sleeping because I don't know. Making sense. You're in class, I know you're sleeping. You had to be down on the desk. You know you are. <laughs> you guys have done that before. You're like, oh, dude, I'm so tired. I'm just phone. leaning back in my chair. Get me up all night. Who's, who's watching Netflix while we're having class? Somebody's got to be. Somebody's going to mute me out and put Netflix on. I like that, but that's not working together. I don't know. I may have gotten so decorative there, it doesn't work, but I, maybe something. I'm going to have to go with something simple. I can tell you that. Um, and I think I'm going to have to go with something. Um, upper lower case. Let me keep it here. I don't want to spend a day doing this. Now, I, I want to make sure that the, the word obviously draplin travel is probably draplin is probably more important than travel. So I'm going to maybe scale down the word travel just a little bit. So I have some room to enlarge the draplin. I'm liking how the P, the descending P, can kind of fit in this little bracket, this little area between the T and the R. I'm liking that a lot, um, but it's still, it's too tight. I got too much kitchen. So I'm gonna put the, the tracking back out. Zero is I think too much tracking, minus 25, 50, it's too close. I'm gonna go to minus 25 and then I'm gonna come in here and kind of play a little bit. I'm gonna again, go back to my touch type tool and I'm going to start with the R. You always want to start on the, in this case, the left, because when I make a move here, it brings the other letters over. Does that make sense? So if I start it back here and move this closer to the I, um, it's not moving the other letter. So I want to see how these all work together. So I'm going to start with, in this case, to the left, get it to where I want, and then I can move the A. And again, you see some other alternatives popping up. So it might be uh, you know, some other alternatives in that typeface. You can also look at the glyphs panel and that shows you those. Um, and the glyphs is where you're also gonna get these, um, the accents, right? Depending on the language that you're typing in, potentially you may wanna have some accents going on. Um, and again, some of them might just be from our, an artistic standpoint. Uh, L, pulling that in. I'm looking, oh, there's that, I won't look right. The I. And then the end. Take put maybe a little accent on there. Accent the goo. Okay. I don't know. Do that. Little accent. No, you know what? We're gonna do that normal. Let's go back to touch type. We're gonna make that A a normal, I'm sorry, the N a normal N. We're gonna to go to the A, and I know A's have some cool accents. I like two dots, right? That's kind of, that's kind of like, I'm just playing, right? So we put that two extra dots on there. Now I look and go, my P is not sitting between the T and the R that I like. I'm gonna scale a little bit. Again, just kind of getting things kind of in place. I'll come back later and, and tweak and modify. Um, I'm okay with the curly Q coming off the country here, but I don't want the D to hang out. So in that case, I'm gonna I'm gonna scale that state up a little bit, and I could stretch it right. So I can it's I can freeform it. Okay, just grab a corner and go. If I want to keep the proportions, hold the shift key. I'm just gonna stretch it a little bit. We all know what this is, and a little bit of stretching is not gonna hurt. Um, 
Now, the problem I created here is I've got a lot of empty space over here. So I'm gonna, again, I'm just playing. I just wanna see what it looks like. What if I kind of stretch that in a little bit? Um, you know, can I make that work? I think we can, I think we're getting close there. I'm just moving that over. And then I wanna come back in here and I, 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 I know this is where that we kind of trace from to get that point down for the, the Great Lakes in there. I'm gonna pull that up. Why? Because I can, right? We're not trying to be accurate that you can, you know, use this map as a way to travel the country. We're just kind of symbolic. Okay. Um, so not too bad, right? I say, well, we're getting there. I've got a weird point in here I'm going to pull out. Um, let me give it a new color. Maybe we'll go with something. Punch. Just kind of click in. Again, just by changing colors, right? By going something like this, it's like pure magenta. It's got a very youth, youthful feel. And it goes something brown, it's got a more serious feel. Um, you know, something like the greens are a little more serious. This kind of lime green, a little pop, again, more youthful. Um, yellow green here, a red. Um, you know, it works, it's exciting. We had it back in orange in the beginning. Um, you know, it could be black and then I changed my type to white. I mean, that's always an option. Okay, so, um, you know, think about what you're doing and how you're doing here. It's white, but in that case, maybe I want to give my, um, give it a stroke. Okay. And just go with a pure stroke. And I could even give it kind of a thick line stroke if I wanted to. Okay. Um, I don't know if that works as well. I mean, maybe I'll go back to uh, lighter orange. And we'll do no stroke. And there with that. Again, we're just playing, right? So the whole point is kind of working. So these are different, right? There's a different type face. Um, we've moved it a little bit. Um, you know, the balance, this one feels a little more balanced. Kind of they're in line, but what do I that? The T didn't get there. So again, maybe I'm like, okay, I like the balance, but I'm liking these type faces. So again, I'm gonna take it, hold down the option after I select it and drag it over. And then I'm going to just kind of move that P over, make that up there. Maybe that's not right. I wonder if they line up right. I'm going to select them both, go to a line and center. And now they're both centered. So I've got equal spacing. And that actually works pretty nicely. Um, with that, I'm going to move it up a little bit. Feels a little low. Okay, so that's one. Now we're going to we're going to play again. What we're thinking about is. What if I make the, the state smaller? Maybe I make the type bigger. Okay, so it's kind of just becomes kind of a background element. You know, how does that fit? What is that relationship of, of this, the states behind the word grappling, grappling travel? Um, again, it's all about this kind of experimentation, this kind of adjusting uh, and working as you go. So um, it takes time. Um, there's another okay. Um, does that make sense? So this design part is 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 a phase, and this is really what you should be working on over the next couple of weeks, uh, or next week or so. It's going to be due next Thursday. Is kind of playing with these elements again. It's a lot of topography um, to make this work. Now, could you? Um, do this without yeah i could go well maybe i don't even need the the word or the map behind it maybe i'm just going to go with a, a nice word mark right and this is it okay or i'm going to go with some other kind of symbol behind this i can go back to my um shapes okay uh and i'm just going to do a polygon tool just kind of pull that out I'm gonna flip it just so I can have the lines. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stroke. And then I'm just gonna kind of play with that. Maybe I'm gonna, you know, pull that down. See how that looks. 
getting a little close there. Let me pull this in. And remember, I can come back in here and I can change these out, right? I can kind of give it a little curve. So maybe that's it. I don't know. But it, the whole point is to kind of work through and work a process um, and know that you can, right? And know that you can make these changes. And again, you can go, okay, this is cool, but now that's becoming a problem. Uh, maybe I want to go back to a normal A. And when I did that, I now bumped or moved up the, um, the, the, the spacing, letter spacing. So I'm going to pull that V closer. Okay, because I want to keep those relationship of the letters together. Um, so I'm just making that change there. And now I can, you know, come back now to this shape and again, work around with it, right? This here and just kind of scale it. Got a little weird with the, with the corners. Um, let me get rid of it. I didn't like it. I just deleted it. I didn't like it that much. I took it away. Right. Now we have a little rounded rectangle. Okay, real simple, right? Real simple. And I could do a um, secondary line with it. Remember, we, we talked about doing this. We have the base. We go to object and path, and we can do the offset um, stroke. And let me just click, wasn't right. Let me just undo that again. Uh, offset path. There we go. Um, and I want to make that, let me say 14. Okay, so now I have that double stroke going around that. I mean, I can even make one of them smaller. So I'm going to make this a smaller stroke. All right, and we have the thicker stroke around it. So they're all in relationship together. Um, okay, that's one. Now I'm going to move on. Maybe again, make a copy and kind of keep moving. Right, so as you get new ideas, as you're coming along, um, work it. Maybe this one, I don't want this at all, but I was liking the idea of a star. Okay, um, I'm gonna keep the radius, let me keep them the same. So it's gonna be a symmetrical star. Let's scale that up. Mm, I don't like that. That's kind of more Pentagon looking. So right now we've got a really thick stroke um, and no fill. So I'm going to make the stroke of zero and flip that around. Um, and right now we're just black, right? And um, again, if your logo works black, that's probably good. Um, you can always add color to it, um, but don't be afraid to do color, right? I'm going to tell you that most uh, most logos now are color. It used to be you find a lot of logos that were just black and white. Um, why? Because it cost a lot to print, right? It was it would cost a lot of money for a company to uh, print their logo. Now in a new world and with digital uh, means, we can do that pretty quickly and fairly cost effectively. Okay. I don't know. It's playing with two stars. I don't know. Okay. All right. So again, we just kind of took ideas and kind of went with it. This idea took us to something else, which took us to something else. Um, and again, that's part of what we're doing as designers, right? I mean, and again, you, you guys are picking up um, picking your own travel agency and what it is and how it is. So, um, you know, you'd kind of define what this is as you're kind of answering your own questions. Um, right? So it's a travel agency of your picking. Um, you're going to work up the logo as we're starting to do here. Um, and then we're going to define it later. Next week on Tuesday, I'll, I'll give you some um, additional parameters uh, of how to spec out color once we select the color for our logos. 
um, we call clear spacing and, and things that we're going to, you're going to want to communicate. So I'll give that to you on Tuesday. You can add it into anything that you've already been doing. Okay. Um, with that. Questions. Yeah, Professor, I turn in my um the secret a day late. Did you get my email? Um, I think I did. Yeah, don't worry about that. If you were late, that's fine. I, I did get your secret sea creatures. So I did get okay. that. Okay. Okay. Did you read you the book cover? I'm sorry, say again. Did you get the read you my book cover? I did. I got your actually I got your your logo. Let me pull that up here, right? So let's yeah. you want, let me give you a little feedback. I'm gonna open it up real quick. So one, I, like I said, you gotta, gotta make, um, I know the font was different because I had a preview of it. I'll, I'll open yeah. the preview of it. So make sure again, you guys are saving outlines because this is what, what I get, right? It says, I'm missing the font. Do I want to um, activate? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I want to see if I can find it because maybe it is available. Um, no, it doesn't look like it's going to. So I'm going to go back one step because I, I like this, this kind of mark. It's kind of fun. But I think when you're, I'm going to save this. I don't save. When I saw the preview, let me see if I'll. I was looking at it. Maybe it was on my phone. It was showing up as a preview. And in the, the typeface, you had. Um, it was very pointy kind of thing. Yeah. It almost felt like, yeah, you know, there it is. See here on the preview. Yeah. So I think it's a it's gonna get a little hard to read uh, when it gets smaller. I think this this HTS, no one's gonna get what that is. So I think you either use it in, in combination with your 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 mark here, or it's without, right? So you have this mark, you could use that somewhere on a business card or you know, on the corner of a ticket or a receipt you don't need the words. So you can have it with the words or without, um, but watch, it's got this little points. Um, one, it's gonna make it a little hard to read when it gets smaller. So here we are pretty small um, and you can kind of see where it's kind of getting a little bit muddy. So I think you wanna maybe pick a typeface that's a little um, easier to read. You can still have that kind of tension here, but you know, this Hell's Travel Services. Um, you know, so obviously you want that that energy, but there's a playfulness of it type of thing. So, you know, you can keep the, the jags, the pointing, but, you know, either work with it or again, you can come in here and you can modify these when you make these outlines, you can come in and change all of those. So if I go back to um, here, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make this um, an outline. So I'm taking the type. I'm going to create outlines here under type. And when I do, they become individual points now. So I can actually zoom in and I could say like, I, I want to have, um, you know, less of a point here, right? So I could either um, just kind of move it in. So I'm just kind of pulling it back. Okay. Um, or I could kind of maybe curve it a little bit more. Uh, I can also zoom in a little bit closer and get in there. And let me see what we got. Maybe I want to get just get rid of that point. I'm going to go up to my uh, under pen tool. I got my delete and anchor point. I'm just going to delete that anchor, periodly. And then I want to make this kind of curve. So if I hit this with the anchor point tool, it gives me the Bezier curves. So now I can kind of round that out, right? So what used to be fairly rigid or straight now has become more rounded out. So it might become more legible. So again, by outlining the typeface, we're allowed to get in there and really kind of play with these um, types. Okay. And that actually looks kind of cool. There's like a nice off center balance here between that D and let me go over here to the old one. So here's the old and here's the new. Right, the same typeface, um, but we've got that extra little curve. It kind of changes it all up a little bit. Okay, so 
Um, don't be afraid to outline your typeface. Again, make copies before you do that because once you start getting in there, it's real easy to kind of muck it all up and go, oh God, I went too far. Um, or I want to go back and make a change. So um, I always say, again, just make a duplication before you get too crazy and get into there. And then once you're done, you can delete it. Like so if I did not need, you know, this and this, and I made a duplicate, and I'm just working on the typeface, you know, when I'm done with it, if I don't need it, I just hit delete and it's gone. Right? But it's so much easier now to have copies. So when I get in there and start to play with that type, and in this case, the shape of that type. I can have something to go back to, right? So I'm just kind of playing around and seeing what I get in here. And likewise, I can move things, I can modify things, I can, you know, I reshape the edge of this. Okay, so you can reshape as you go. We didn't do a lot, but it, it is a little more curvy here um, than it is here. Okay, and the V is definitely different. You can see the thickness of the V has changed up. Okay, uh, and maybe I want to make this E, I want to pull these two points up. So I'm going to select those two points, I'm selecting them both, and then I'm just kind of moving them. All right, so I can kind of pull those up. Maybe I want to connect it, All right? So these are things that you can do once you make outlines, you can kind of get in there and make those modifications to have it become what you want it to be. Okay, so, um, it's a good thing to do that. And it's a really cool thing, especially with logos. I mean, again, it's all done all the time. We, we're always in there kind of mucking with it, trying to tweak it out to make it a little bit different, a little bit better than what had. Um, but when you find the right typeface, this becomes a starting point, And then you get in there and you start to muck with it and you'll kind of tweak it and modify it. Um, ultimately, it ends up making it unique and special. And that's something definitely clients want. Okay, so that, that's where I would go that. I like, again, I like your um, logo. We're gonna preview that. Okay, so I like the mark. I think that works. Um, do you wanna explain this at all? It looks like a smiley face of some sort. Is from a show by Ray. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I think you would probably want a little more spacing between the mark and the words here. And I think you can get rid of the letting the space between these lines just a little bit. So the word hell and travels can be a little closer and the word travels and servers can be a little closer. Don't make them touching, okay. but I think just a little bit in there. But yeah, keep working on that, that's good. Nice. And then we have one earlier. Who else had that? I'm gonna. Yeah. Here we go. Just another. <laughs> gonna post a different. That's that's uh outdated. I'm not working with that anymore. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So we don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Let's close. We're gone. All right. Um, anything else? Any other questions? I, I do have another one that I'll post shortly. Okay. Because I figure I ought to. Hello. Put that on the regular picture. And then I'm going to put send the file on the, uh, the chat here. And so I can navigate it. Is this the one? Make double check. Okay, there's the one. There you go. Okay. So it's a little, a little hard to read. A little legibility with the when it's tiny. Um. 
it's based off of the flag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally get that. That's, and that's totally fine. Um, my first thought is it feels like these, this typeface has been stretched. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it has, but it, it, just the way it's kind of feels like it's been elongated. Mm -hmm. um, so check that and see. Because um, you got to watch because right now we've got a lot of verticals like the I, the L. They, they're kind of like looking as a bunch of eyes. Gotcha. So it may not be the most legible, especially when it gets smaller. It's going to become a little unlegible yeah. with that. Um, I get what you're doing with the, what that we'll call it the sun. I don't know what that yeah. is. It's a symbolic like sun. A sun. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it needs it. I mean, this is kind of, I'm getting it here. I'm getting the symbology of it off, especially mm -hmm. with the way you've laid it out. Um, you might see again if there's a simpler or sim more simplified um, map of the country. Well, you know, it's obviously it's made up of islands and such. But you know, do we have to have every little island in there? Can we do a more symbolic uh, way of showing the Philippines that people understand? Does that make sense? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it, it looks like for me, Discover Philippines is, is probably something from um, we'll say an agency or the government of the Philippines. That they're putting this out into the world to have people come to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Does that make? Does that? Kind yeah, of look? absolutely. That makes sense. So, so again, you can't. You, you have to assume that you know some people know the Philippine flag, some don't. Some may know the shapes of of the country based on the islands, and some don't. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you can have abstraction, but you don't want to overdo it, where mm -hmm. people don't get it at all. Um, okay. You know, and again, think about it. I mean, do I can I do it without you know showing the country itself, right? Can I just do Discover Philippines in some kind of graphical way with an icon, um, or maybe using the colors of the flag um, interplayed to make this work out? So I mean, I think you you got ideas here, but I think you got to pursue it a little bit more. Um, right, right, right. You know, and also look at look at other other things that are iconic as to why people go to the Philippines. Okay. I mean, you know, so maybe there is some, some iconic structures or, or natural elements um, that are why like people go to the Philippines, right? I mean, they're not going for the flag. They're yeah. going for, so again, I, you know, I would definitely um, look at and pursue and investigate those kind of things. Um, gotcha. I mean, if I, I'm recalling now, the, the Philippines have some really cool beaches, and then they have these like, um, like these massive stones along the beaches, like little rock islands. Is that? I'm, I'm seeing recall this from like some James yeah. Bond film or something. I would say, uh, as far as you know, as far as what I know of the Philippines, you know, being there a couple times. Okay. It's it's more like a food community. Okay. <laughs> it's very. <laughs> That's very trademark. Um, mangoes. Um, I know it's spelled wrong, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Yeah, but there's a lot of yeah, deep. I'm sorry, I'm thinking this kind of very yeah, very yeah. island. Yeah, I mean, you know, so maybe you can bring in some of that. I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, again, I'm sure there's some really cool architecture. Yeah, I'm think I'm starting to think. Um, Maybe like a, ooh, something like a. You, are you guys familiar with like the, uh, the volcano, that recently exploded, in the Philippines? Yeah, I think so. I am. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I could find a volcano that hasn't yet <laughs> blown yeah. up. That well, that again, was the name of the volcano. Symbolic, so don't worry about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, um, so I'll just you know, uh, I'll just try to look around and see if I can find a uh, a landmass in the Philippines that. Like I said, yeah, that, that's what it is about, and then it's like going through all again. Maybe there's something architecturally, oh, maybe not. You know, I don't know, but it's yeah. about you going through and trying to decipher that down again. Let's say you wanted this kind of building, mm -hmm. the World Heritage Site. Um, you know, you think all oh, this is very, very symbolic of the Philippines. Again, you're going to break this down to the very um, simple geometric things. You're not going to put all this detail in there. It's too much, right? right? Yeah. So 
again, it's just kind of taking ideas and kind of breaking them down um, and, and, and coming up with this simple um, geography, this simple kind of vernacular language that you can do. Um, and in this case, to do the Philippines, which is kind of cool. Like I said, I mean, there, uh, that's a very cool idea. And there's obviously a lot that's happening there. And like you said, you mentioned the food. We didn't even get into food. So maybe there's, you know, some foods that are iconic um, that could be symbolic. What, if, what if it's like a food a food tour? Like you go to different parts? And yeah, you're... well, I mean, again, you could, you know, if you're visiting the Philippines, it could be in it for anything. Yeah. Right? It, it, you could have food tours or, or beach tours or, Archi archi architectural tours, um, combinations, right? I mean, there's a lot when you start talking about a country mm -hmm. that's part of their culture. So, okay. um, you know, coming up with the, the graphics that say the Philippines, um, I definitely think you can do it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Sounds good. I'll, I'll start working with the, what we're discussing. Thank you very much. No problem. Anybody else? Anything else you want to go over? Gets feeling all right. So um, work on work on your logos. Feel free to send them. Um, I can leave the email back, or we can talk about them in class like this on Tuesday. And um, it'll be Thursday again. You know, if, if you need extra time because we've gotten into it, that's fine. Uh, we will um, let me make a note here for. Thursday. Um, add color and, and, and how to kind of define the type or the logo. So we'll do that on Thursday. Um, these are kind of just other things you'll want to be aware of with your logo. So I'm going to put that up. Um, I'll get the new the videos from last week up and then of course or from Tuesday and today up. I guess the Tuesdays is up. It's on YouTube, but it's not on the, the website yet. Um, but you can look it up on the YouTube channel. And then we'll get this one up. And I'm looking for that book of logos that um, Aaron Draplin talked about. So I'm, I'm trying to find that so I can throw that up on our website also. All right, anything else? We're Thursday. We survived most of the rain this week, it looks like. A few more drizzles. Yeah. Um, temperature but, dropping for a bit. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little chilly, as you're saying, a little chill, but it'll, it'll warm up soon. And we'll all have our, our weekends again soon. Let's hope. My, uh, we set up a big old uh, wind chime outside my window. Is it banging away? <laughs> <laughs> the, the rain's hitting it hard and uh you know sometimes it's hard to uh to catch some shut eye around here <laughs> yeah I guess you might want to quiet that down so you can get a nap so it's like why why do we have this <laughs> <laughs> all right all right anything else guys all right so i'm gonna pause